Hello, maths fans. This is Dr. Tom Crawford at the University of Oxford. And today, on Tom Rock's Maths, we'll be reading a maths textbook at Fireside. Today's text is an introduction to real analysis by Robert Bartle and Donald Sherbert. This is the third edition. We will begin with chapter two. The algebraic and order properties of the real numbers. We begin with a brief discussion of the algebraic structure of the real number system. We will give a short list of basic properties of addition and multiplication from which all other algebraic properties can be derived as theorems. In the terminology of abstract algebra, the system of real numbers is a field with respect to addition and multiplication. The basic properties listed in 2.1.1 are known as the field axioms. A binary operation associates with each pair AB a unique element B of AB, but we will use the conventional notations of A plus B and A dot B when discussing the properties of addition and multiplication. Section 2.1.1 Algebraic Properties of R On the set R of real numbers, there are two binary operations described by plus and dot and called addition and multiplication respectively. These operations satisfy the following properties. Axiom A1. A plus B equals B plus A for all A and B in R. The commutative property of addition. Axiom A2. A plus B in brackets plus C is equal to A plus brackets B plus C close bracket for all A, B, C in R. This is the associative property of addition. Axiom A3. There exists an element 0 in R such that 0 plus A equals A and A plus 0 equals A for all A in R. This is the existence of a zero element axiom. Axiom A4. For each A in the real numbers, there exists an element minus A also in the real numbers, such that A plus minus A is equal to zero, and minus A plus A is also equal to zero. This is the existence of negative elements. Axiom M1. A dot B is equal to B dot A for all A and B in the real numbers. This is the commutative property of multiplication. Axiom M2. A dot B bracket dot C is equal to A dot bracket B dot C. For all A, B and C in the real numbers, this is the associative property of multiplication. Axiom M3. There exists an element 1 in the real numbers distinct from 0 such that 1 dot A is equal to A and A dot 1 is equal to A. And this is true for all A in R. 
This is the existence of a unit element. Axiom M4. For each a non-zero in the real numbers, there exists an element 1 divided by a also in the real numbers, such that a multiplied by 1 divided by a is equal to 1. And 1 divided by a multiplied by a is also equal to 1. This is the existence of reciprocals. The final axiom is labelled D, and this states the following. A dot brackets B plus C is equal to A dot B plus A dot C. And B plus C dotted with A is equal to b dot a plus c dot a for all a, b, and c in the real numbers. And this is the distributive property of multiplication over addition. These properties should be familiar to the reader. The first four are connected with addition. The next four with multiplication. And the last one connects the two operations. The point of this list is that all the familiar techniques of algebra can be derived from these nine properties in much the same spirit that the theorems of Euclidean geometry can be deduced from the five basic axioms stated by Euclid in his elements. Since this task, more properly, belongs to a course in abstract algebra, we will not carry it out here. However, to exhibit the spirit of the endeavour, we will sample a few results and their proofs. We first establish the basic fact that the elements 0 and 1, whose existence were asserted in axiom A3 and axiom M3, are in fact unique. We also show that multiplication by zero always results in zero. 2.1.2 Theorem, Part A. If Z and A are elements in R, with Z plus A equal to A, then z is equal to zero. Part b. If u and b, which is a non-zero element in R, with u dot b equal to b, then u is equal to one. Part c. If a belongs to the real numbers, then a dot zero is zero. Proof. Part A. Using axioms A3, A4, and A2, the hypothesis Z plus A is equal to A, along with axiom A4, we get Z is equal to Z plus zero, which is equal to Z plus bracket A plus bracket minus A, close bracket, close bracket, is equal to open bracket Z plus A, close bracket, plus open bracket minus A, close bracket, is equal to A plus open bracket minus A, close bracket, is equal to zero. This completes the proof of part A. Proof of part B. Using axioms M3, M4, M2, the assumed equality U dot B 
is equal to b, along with axiom m4 again, we get u is equal to u dot 1, which is equal to u dot b dot 1 divided by b, which itself is equal to u dot b, close bracket, dot 1 divided by b, which is then equal to b dotted with 1 divided by b, which is equal to 1. This completes the proof of part b. In part c, we have a plus a dot 0 is equal to a dot 1 plus a dot 0, which itself is equal to a dot 1 plus 0, which equals a dot 1, which equals a. Therefore, we conclude from part a of the theorem that a dot 0 is indeed 0. Q E D. We next establish two important properties of multiplication, the uniqueness of reciprocals, and the fact that a product of two numbers is zero only when one of the factors is zero. 2.1.3 Theorem Part A If A is non-zero, and b in the real numbers are such that a dot b is equal to 1, then b is equal to 1 divided by a. Part b. If a dot b is 0, then either a is 0 or b is 0. Proof. Part a. Using axiom M3. Axiom M4, Axiom M2, the hypothesis A dot B is equal to 1, and Axiom M3, we have B is equal to 1 dot B, which is equal to 1 divided by A dotted with A dotted with B, which is equal to 1 divided by A dotted with a dot b, which is equal to 1 divided by a dotted with 1, which is equal to 1 divided by a. For the proof of part b, it suffices to assume a is non-zero and prove that b is zero. We multiply a dot b by 1 divided by a, and apply axioms m2, m4, and m3 to get 1 divided by a dot a dot b is equal to 1 divided by a dot a, all dotted with b, which is equal to 1 dot b which is equal to b. Since a dot b is equal to 0, by part c of the previous theorem, this also equals 1 divided by a dot a dot b, which is equal to 1 divided by a dot 0, which is equal to 0. Thus, we have b is equal to zero. QED. These theorems represent a small sample of the algebraic properties of the real number system. Some additional consequences of the field properties are given in the exercises at the back of the book. The operation of subtraction is defined by a minus b is equal to a plus minus b for a and b in R. Similarly, 
division is defined for a and b in R, with b non-zero, by a divided by b is equal to a multiplied by 1 divided by b. In the following, we will use this customary notation for subtraction and division, and we will use all the familiar properties of these operations. We will ordinarily drop the use of the dot to indicate multiplication and write AB for A dot B. Similarly, we will use the usual notation for exponents and write A squared for AA, A, A cubed for A squared multiplied by A, and in general, we define A to the power of N plus 1 to be a to the power of n multiplied by a for n a natural number. We agree to adopt the convention that a to the power of 1 is equal to a. Further, if a is non-zero, we write a to the power of 0 is equal to 1, and a to the power of minus 1 for 1 divided by a. And if n belongs to the natural numbers, we will write a to the power of minus n for 1 divided by a all to the power of n, whenever it is convenient to do so. In general, we will freely apply all the usual techniques of algebra without further elaboration. This completes section 2.1 on the algebraic properties of the real numbers. We will continue shortly with a further section from chapter 2. Having now made myself a little more comfortable, we will continue reading from Robert Bartle and Donald Sherbert's An Introduction to Real Analysis, 3rd edition. Section 2.2 absolute value and the real line. From the trichotomy property, we are assured that if A belongs to the real numbers and A is non-zero, then exactly one of the numbers A and minus A are positive. The absolute value of non-zero A is defined to be the positive one of these two numbers. The absolute value of zero is defined to be zero. 2.2.1 Definition The absolute value of a real number A denoted by vertical line A vertical line is defined by vertical line A, vertical line, is equal to A if A is positive, 0 if A is 0, and minus A if A is negative. For example, the absolute value of 5 is equal to 5, and the absolute value of minus 8 is equal to 8. We see from the definition that the modulus of A is greater than or equal to zero for all A belonging to the real numbers, and that the modulus of A is equal to zero if and only if A is equal to zero. Also, the modulus of minus A is equal to the modulus of A for all real A. Some additional properties are as follows. 2.2.2 .2 Theorem, Part A. The modulus of AB is equal to the modulus of A multiplied by the modulus of B. And this is true for all A and B as real numbers. Part B. The modulus of A squared is equal to A squared. 
for all a belonging to the real numbers. Part C. If C is greater than or equal to zero, then the modulus of A is less than or equal to C. If, and only if, minus C is less than or equal to A, which is less than or equal to C. Part D. Minus the modulus of A is less than or equal to A, which is less than or equal to the modulus of A for all A belonging to R. Proof of Theorem Part A If either A or B is zero, then both sides are equal to zero. There are four other cases to consider. If A is greater than naught, and B is greater than naught, then AB is greater than naught so that the modulus of AB equals AB, which is equal to the modulus of A times the modulus of B. If A is greater than zero, and B is less than zero, then AB is less than zero, so that the modulus of AB is equal to minus AB, which is equal to A multiplied by minus B, which is equal to the modulus of A times the modulus of B. The remaining cases are treated similarly. Part B. Since A squared is greater than or equal to zero, we have A squared is equal to the modulus of A squared which is equal to the modulus of A times A, which is equal to the modulus of A times the modulus of A, which is equal to the modulus of A all squared. Part C. If the modulus of A is less than or equal to C, then we have both A is less than or equal to C and minus A is less than or equal to C which is equivalent to minus C less than or equal to A, which is less than or equal to C. Conversely, if minus C is less than or equal to A, which is less than or equal to C, then we have both A less than or equal to C and minus A less than or equal to C, so that the modulus of A is less than or equal to C. For part D, we simply take C is equal to the modulus of A in part C, QED. The following important inequality will be used frequently. 2.2.3 Triangle Inequality If A and B belong to R, then the modulus of A plus B is less than or equal to the modulus of A plus the modulus of B. Proof. From theorem 2.2.2 part D, we have minus the modulus of A is less than or equal to A is less than or equal to the modulus of A. And minus the modulus of B is less than or equal to B, which is less than or equal to the modulus of B. On adding these inequalities, we obtain minus brackets, modulus of A plus modulus of B, close bracket, is less than or equal to A plus B, is less than or equal to the modulus of A plus the modulus of B. Hence, by theorem 2.2.2 part C, we have the modulus of A plus B is less than or equal to the modulus of A plus the modulus of B, QED. It can be shown that equality occurs in the triangle inequality if and only if AB is greater than zero, which is equivalent to saying that A and B have the same sign. 
There are many useful variations of the triangle inequality. Here are two. 2.2.4 Corollary If A and B belong to the real numbers, then part A, the modulus of the modulus of A minus the modulus of B is less than or equal to the modulus of A minus B. Part B, the modulus of A minus B is less than or equal to the modulus of A plus the modulus of B. Proof. Part A. We write A equals A minus B plus B and then apply the triangle inequality to get the modulus of A is equal to the modulus of brackets A minus B plus B which is less than or equal to the modulus of A minus B plus the modulus of B. Now, subtracting the modulus of B, we get the modulus of A minus the modulus of B is less than or equal to the modulus of A minus B. Similarly, from the modulus of B is equal to the modulus of B minus A plus A, which is less than or equal to the modulus of B minus A plus the modulus of A, we obtain minus the modulus of A minus B, which is equal to minus the modulus of B minus A, which is less than or equal to the modulus of A minus the modulus of B. If we combine these two inequalities using 2.2.2 part C, we get the inequality in part A. Part B. Replacing B in the triangle inequality by minus B to get the modulus of A minus B is less than or equal to the modulus of A plus the modulus of minus B. Since the modulus of minus B is equal to B, we obtain the inequality in part B. QED a straightforward application of mathematical induction extends the triangle inequality to any finite number of elements of R. 2.2.5 Corollary If A1, A2, up to An are any real numbers, then the modulus of A1 plus A2 continuing up to the addition of a n is less than or equal to the modulus of a1 plus the modulus of a2 continuing up to the addition of the modulus of a n. The following examples illustrate how the properties of absolute value can be used. 2.2.6 Examples Part A Determine the set A of x belonging to the real numbers such that the modulus of 2x plus 3 is less than 7. From a modification of 2.2.2 part C for the case of strict inequality, we see that x belongs to A if and only if minus 7 is less than 2x plus 3 is less than 7, which is satisfied if and only if minus 10 is less than 2x is less than 4. Dividing by 2, we conclude that A is equal to the set of x belonging to R such that minus 5 is less than x is less than 2. Part B. Determine the set B which equals x belonging to the real numbers, such that the modulus of x minus 1 is less than the modulus of x. One method is to consider cases so that the absolute value symbols can be removed. Here, we take the following cases. Part 1. x is greater than or equal 
to one. Part two. Zero is less than or equal to x, which is less than one. And part three, x is less than zero. In case one, the inequality becomes x minus one is less than x, which is satisfied without further restriction. Therefore, all x such that x is greater than or equal to one belong to the set B. In case two, the inequality becomes minus x minus one is less than x, which requires that x is greater than one divided by two. Thus, this case contributes all x such that one half is less than x is less than one to the set B. In case three, the inequality becomes minus brackets x minus one is less than minus x, which is equivalent to one is less than zero. Since this statement is false, no value of x from case three satisfies the inequality. Forming the union of the three cases, we conclude that b is equal to x belonging to the reals such that x is greater than one half. Example C. Let the function f be defined by f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 3x plus 1, all divided by 2x minus 1. And this is true for x between 2 and 3. We are asked to find a constant m such that the modulus of f of x is less than or equal to m for all x satisfying 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 3. We consider separately the numerator and denominator of the modulus of f of x which is equal to the modulus of 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 divided by the modulus of 2x minus 1. From the triangle inequality, we obtain the modulus of 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 is less than or equal to 2 times the modulus of x squared plus 3 times the modulus of x plus 1, which is less than or equal to 2 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 plus 1, which is equal to 28, since the modulus of x is less than or equal to 3 for the x under consideration. Also, the modulus of 2x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 2 times the modulus of x minus 1, which itself is greater than or equal to 2 times 2 minus 1, which equals 3, since the modulus of x is greater than or equal to 2 for the x under consideration. Thus, 1 divided by the modulus of 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to 1 third for x greater than or equal to 2. Therefore, for 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3, we have the modulus of fx is less than or equal to 28 divided by 3. Hence, we can take m is equal to 28 divided by 3. Note that we have found one such constant, m. Evidently, any number h greater than 28 divided by 3 will also satisfy the modulus of f being less than or equal to h. It is also possible that 28 divided by 3 is not the smallest possible choice for m. And this concludes section 2.2. The final reading for today comes from section 2.3, entitled The Completeness Property of the Real Numbers. It is not possible to prove on the basis of the field 
and order properties of R that were discussed in section 2.1, that every non-empty subset of R that is bounded above has a supremum in R. However, it is a deep and fundamental property of the real number system that this is indeed the case. We will make frequent and essential use of this property, especially in our discussion of limiting processes. The following statement concerning the existence of Suprema is our final assumption about the real numbers. Thus, we say that R is a complete ordered field. 2.3.6 The Completeness Property of R Every non-empty set of real numbers that has an upper bound also has a supremum in R. This property is also called the supremum property of R. The analogous property for infima can be deduced from the completeness property as follows. Suppose that S is a non-empty subset of R that is bounded below. Then the non-empty set S bar, which is equal to minus S, such that S belongs to S, is bounded above. And the supremum property implies that U, defined to be the supremum of S bar, exists in R. The reader should verify in detail that minus U is the infinitum of S. That concludes today's Fireside Maths textbook reading from Tom Rock's Maths. I'll see you next time.